This is Karen Cummings, and we're looking today in our class at a very common concept about programming language called variable names. We've been talking about storage and memory, and a variable name is a label for location and memory. Every location has to have something to identify it, and from the programmer's point of view, what you're going to use to identify is a label for location and memory. You can think of a location and memory as a container. So consider this perhaps a shoebox, uh, any kind of container, and the computer's memory is made up of millions of containers. So you can put something in here. Now what can you put in there? Well, you can put things in there like numeric values, like any number, you know, 15.3, 27, any number, a numeric value can be put into a location in memory. For example, you have information about you that would be a numeric value. Your uh, score on the last test is a numeric value, and in order for the computer to do anything with that score, such as determine what your average for the course is perhaps, you'd need to have that score in a container in memory. And that location where this container is has to be identified. A program is going to tell the computer what to do step by step. So the program will have to come back and refer to this location. In order to do that, it needs a name for it. That's what a variable name is. A variable name is a name for a location or a container in memory. For example, we could call this location right here test 1, and we could put a score in that location, let's say 85. And so now we have a numeric value stored in a location in memory with a variable name. Besides numeric values, we can put another kind of value out there that's text or a character value. And of course, you have information like that stored in a computer's memory. Also, if uh, the computer's performing some action on a data, it might be, for example, your last name. So you can store character information in a location in memory. But once again, you have to name the box as well. And the name for the box, the name for the container, is the variable name. So we can call this container right here, where we're going to put someone's last name. Uh, we could call it name, but name is a pretty generic term, like name of the class, name of the teacher, name of the student, uh, last name, first name. It might be a good idea to call this student, okay? or student last name, to label our container in memory so that we can refer to it. Uh, some other examples, let's put another box here and say we're going to label this box or have the computer label for us uh, a box called test two and we're gonna put our score on our second test in that box right here. Another numeric value stored in location in memory. So now we have the power to do something with the computer because we can go to test one and get the score, and we can go to test two and get the score, and tell the computer to use the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit, to add those two numbers together and divide by two to get an average and get a result. But what's gonna happen with the result? The result also has to go somewhere in a location memory, so we're also gonna have to make up a variable name again to label this other box. And if we're going to calculate an average, maybe it's test average, semester average, whatever we need to describe the name, we're going to label this box, say average, and it's going to have not the formula, which would be test one plus test two divided by two, but the result of the calculation of that formula in the box. Our next step might be to take this information and send it to the printer. So if we want to print out the name of the student, we could send it to the box called student, we can get the information, which in this case is text or a character value, and tell it to send it to the printer. If we're going to pretend like this is what the printer is producing right here, it could write Smith. And then we can tell it perhaps all we need to write out is the average for the semester. And we could write out the average right there. Send that number to the printer also, and then go on to the next student. We're going to look in what some of our next sections about how we decide what to name each one of these locations right here or containers where we can put things, how we come up with these variable names because there are some rules for those, 
And we're going to also look at what we can do with the values, numeric values or character text values that we have in each one of these locations. If you go to the lab section on Blackboard, go back to Lesson 5 and find our examples and some uh, review material that covers variable names, and we will look at Lesson 6 very soon. Thank you very much. I will turn this off. <laughs>